Six minutes past three. Luckily, Jonathan Ashby, the artistic director uh, of the London Contemporary Theatre, uh, heard my audition uh, just now, and he's going to call my agent. Jonathan, welcome. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> You'll let me know. You'll let me know. I know. Uh, so, London Contemporary Theatre, how long has that been going? Where did it start? It's, uh, it's nine months old. Mm -hmm. uh, nine months ago, uh, me and Philip Ryder, who founded the company, uh, sat in Pizza Express, uh, and we wanted to find um, something we could be proactive with within our own careers, yeah. and we decided to make the radio play of A Christmas Carol in uh, aid of Great Ormond Street Hospital. So we've got all the recording equipment ourselves, so we set up a studio in our flat and we started recording... Uh, we had 65 in the cast, uh, which wow. is a huge amount. And we recorded it over three months. Uh, lots of friends involved, lots of people we'd worked with. Um, and, and we finished it and we thought, wow, you know, this, this could really go somewhere. We could do something with this. Mm -hmm. So from there, we took London Contemporary Theatre and um, Jake Adley, who's our, our third producer, uh, came on board with us. And, uh, yeah, it's progressed from there. We've been producing plays and radio plays since, and we've got a season of six radio plays every year now. And where, we do, produce, where can we hear those? Where do they go? Uh, they're available on uh, www.londoncontempt.com right. uh, as um, digital versions or CD versions. Uh, and also they will be, in the next few months, available on Audible and Amazon. Excellent. Is it more and more difficult now to get radio plays on the radio? I know it's a crazy thing to say, but we're, we're always used to saying uh, to you just now, my, my grandfather loved radio plays, my mother loved radio plays. We don't hear them as much except maybe on Radio 4. Yeah, I think Radio 4 is the main place they're played. Radio 2 do some every now and then. But, but yeah, there's, there's not really any, any other outlets apart from Audible.com and digital outlets. There's, no one else is really putting them online, which is, is a, on, on air, yeah. which is um, a shame, really. But then we thought, when we, uh, when we started doing it, we thought, our oh, radio plays, we've really hit a gap in the market there. And we were very wrong. There's a lot of people making radio plays. Really? But, uh, but yeah, they're making, everyone makes them in their own different way. There's a company that do it like a film, so they they follow around with the booms and they record yeah. it live. Um, we don't. We record it in a studio. But was your were your Christmas Carol? Was that full length? Yeah, it's an hour and fifteen minutes. Wow. So I adapted it, and we've got music. We have live music in every in every radio play. So it's like a, it's like a film almost without the vision. We have music running the whole way up yeah. that drives it. The idea is that we can get uh, the younger audience listening to the radio plays yeah. because because they are exciting. They can be good, and 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 I think the younger audience think they're boring, which which they're not. So what what is interesting when I first did Christmas Carol on stage. Uh, we started at uh, Theatre Cluid at the Welsh National yeah, Theatre yeah. at Bolt. And um, I went up for the very first... Uh, the, the first show we did was a matinee. And uh, I said, I thought, we, we've got extra vocals coming from somewhere. And I couldn't work it out. And then I realised, I mean, they're, they're all schools on the matinee. And they're all singing. And I thought, it's impossible. I've written the songs and they can't possibly know them. But what they did, the trick was, a month before, they sent half a dozen of the songs... Uh, the demos out to all the schools so they learned about Christmas Carol listened to the music so by the time they came there they knew the songs that's great it was an extraordinary feeling yeah I did I was lucky enough to do uh, Christmas Carol on stage um, a couple of years ago for Lincoln Theatre Rep yeah uh, and a funny story from that our, uh, our guy Michael Garland who was playing the Ghost of Christmas Present uh, was about to come on. The Ghost of Christmas Past did this big ballet routine and went off and, uh, and then he came on with this big fanfare and the uh, with this big candle, it was very, very dramatic, and he came on, he went, I am the ghost of Christmas past. And then this look went over his face, and he went, and present. <laughs> <laughs> They're economising. <Yes. laughs> I love it. Alistair Sim, of course, was uh, uh, a great, uh, yeah. a great Scrooge. I mean, uh, shot at Nettlepole Studios just post-war, but very, very good Scrooge. Yeah, there's been some fantastic Scrooges, actually, uh, along the way. Michael Caine is my yeah. favourite in Muppets in Christmas Muppets. Carol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a good version still, I love yeah, it. it. Is, um, yeah. A guy called Paul Prescott played it in ours, who was a... Uh, one of my favourite teachers from Red Roof Theatre School, mm -hmm. which is where I trained. Um, so he yeah, came we were back talking with some me. of the people from uh, Red Roof a few weeks ago. So, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. How, how long were you there? I was there for two years, mm -hmm. uh, 2009 to 2011. Uh, it was fantastic. I really, really enjoyed it. I looked around a lot of schools, and uh, I think when you're looking for a drama school, you've got to find the one that suits you. It's not yeah, yeah. just, you yeah. know, there's Rada and Lambda, there's all these amazing schools, but, you know, if it doesn't suit you, if it doesn't suit your personality, then yeah. it's not going to go too well. And um, I worked very hard at Red Roost, and they worked very hard for me, and I'm very thankful for that, and they were they're a fantastic organisation there. So do you find very few outlets now, apart from online, for 
radio plays. I guess you do, so... Yeah, yeah, but we've been in touch with lots of different radio stations trying to push it now, and, and they are open to the idea. Mm. So, you know, hopefully within the next few, you know, three, four years, we can start yeah. getting it on other outlets, I'm and hopefully sure, other companies I'm will follow sure us. I'm sure they'd love that here, you know? Yeah. I'm sure it'd be great. Even if you did a 15-minute thing each day, you know, yeah. or... Or 10 minutes each day as a serial or something like that. Yeah, it'd be, be great. Great. Let's set up, Mike. Come on. Yeah. I think it'd be great. <laughs> Let's I mean, do I, think, it. I, think, uh, I think people in this area would absolutely enjoy that because, uh, you know, it's, it's a speech driven station anyway. Uh, so, you know, you could do it in, in little five minute chunks and stuff yeah. like that with, with the music in between. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Wow. Definitely. Bring it back, I say. But you've had to move into other areas as well because uh, that doesn't make the living for you. Yeah. Uh, as was always the plan as well, um, myself, Jacob, and Philip. Uh, who run the company are actors as well. We've mm-hmm. all trained, we're all actors. Uh, Philip's a musical director too, so he's very good in his music. Um, so the theatre has always been been the desire as well, and uh, so we started producing plays, uh, and and really in, we really enjoy it, and we try to do it in an unusual way and, and bring bring people into the show a bit more so it's mm-hmm. not like they're watching it so it's like we really welcome them to our world which is actually uh something we all grew up basically in the south Hill park art center right. and it's something that's there like uh, wind in the willows was there a few weeks ago and uh you really felt you were welcome to that world like they're very very open community productions and that's the sort of theater we really wanted to make yeah. is, is that your sort of home territory south Hill park yeah, yeah yeah we we don't want to be there forever we do want to carry on performing there but we want to expand so well, about touring i mean do you use that as a production theater and then try and tour off the back of that when you can yeah we do um macbeth Ooh, weather oh might, weather might I've change avoided, now i've avoided <laughs> saying it all morning oh. no i think we're all right i think as long as we're not backstage in the theater oh I think is we're that all right, right. Oh, that's if the okay. weather changes it's my fault i apologize to everyone yeah listening. don't you have to turn around three times in a circle and spit or something yeah apparently so apparently or don't do so. it here <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah macbeth is uh is in south hill park uh, it's been there for a week and it's there for another week this week. Yeah. Uh, and then it's touring. It's going to G Live in Guildford and it's going to Brentwood. And then in November, it's going back out and it's going to a London theatre, which I can't announce yet, but it's a, a very exciting London theatre. Who are transferring small theater? it? No, big theatre. Well, how many? Uh, 800 uh, seats? No, no, no. It's, well, it has, it has a theatre. I can't give too much away. It has a theatre and then it's got another theatre there as well. And we're in the second space, which is more like a studio space. The studio which is, space. Which is the only which, way our show can which work. Which seats about 80. Uh, this one is 250. Is it? Yeah. I'm guessing the wrong theatre then. Yes, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I was guessing in my head without saying anything there, but um, uh, clearly not. But I can suggest um, another theatre for you as well in London. Which is uh, the Chafag Studios? The St James no. Theatre. Oh. Uh, which is the newest <laughs> London theatre. Uh, the main auditorium is 320, I think. Yeah. And there's a little studio that does 80. Yeah. But, so uh, maybe yeah. we'll have to check that one out. Right, well, definitely worth checking it out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, so who actually books your stuff on the road? Do you have one of you that actually contacts the theatre? Yeah, I book them. Yeah. I book them. I ring round. Um, South Park, obviously, we have a great relationship with. Mm-hmm. Uh, G Live, we've got a good relationship with because uh, G Live's actually has a few ex South Hill Park staff members there. Right. So we've uh, been so in touch with them. Easy, and yeah. also my sister works there, which is a which is a plus. Ah, nothing which wrong is with a bit of nepotism, isn't uh, it, really? Exactly. And then uh, the Brentwood Theatre, which is our third venue on this tour, um, I auditioned for and got a job with. Ended up not doing the job, actually, a few years ago, but I've had a great relationship with them since. Mm. So on the first occasion, we've... Um, We've used the relationships we've got to, to launch a show, and, and now lots of other theatres are showing an interest, which is great. Yeah. So in November, we'll tour it before it goes into London. So. Do you need certain capacity to in order to break even or make money? Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah. But some venues we won't make so much, and some venues we will, and it'll all even out. I guess it depends on, on the uh, the size of the cast and, and music exactly, and orchestra yeah. or whatever. You know. Yeah, and in, in Macbeth, we only have uh, five in the cast. Yeah. Which is, uh, we had a review the other day that said when the lights came up at the end, because it's set in pitch black and there are lights, it's, it, there's, there's torches and there's sources of light, but when they said the lights actually came up at the end and there was a bow, they couldn't believe there was only five people and at that they couldn't believe there was only one woman in the cast right. who plays all the female roles, which is only two or three, but... <laughs> we'll talk more about uh, doing Shakespeare in the dark in a moment. It's quite extraordinary. Uh, Jonathan Ashby, artistic director, with me in the studio in 3.15 BBC Radio Bunch. 18 minutes after three, BBC Radio Berkshire, Jonathan Ashby, my guest, talking about uh, the Scottish play uh, at South Hill Park and doing it in the dark. 
Uh, it's quite extraordinary. When I read that, I thought, oh, they're cheating. There's nobody there on stage. You could, you could <laughs> play a record or something like that, or somebody can mumble a bit. But um, uh, doing it in the dark, do the audience feel shortchanged? I don't think so. Um, we do have torches and lights. Uh, we use mobile phones at some point as well uh -huh. that, that actually really light up people's faces. That's, um, that is spooky. Yeah. When you put something under the face, it's yeah. very, very scary looking. Yeah. Yeah, it is very, and that's we use that for Banquo actually yeah, when yeah. Banquo comes back. Um, so you do see things, but it's it, the idea of it. You know, Macbeth is all secret meetings and plans taking place in the shadows. So by setting it in pitch black, we give the audience the feeling of um, of eavesdropping, like like a fly on the wall almost. Yeah. Uh, so we can really bring them into the world of the play. Um, I was just thinking, it, I mean, if it's in the pitch black. Uh, and he's saying, is this a dagger I see before? And you always go, how do we know we can't well, see anything? Well, you can see it. Uh, <laughs> we use, we use a, a, a light source for oh, that. Oh, fine, okay. Um, and okay. it floats. It, actually, I, actually, I think it works better than a lot of other uh, productions I've seen where they've had the dagger hanging from string. Yeah, yeah. Or it's just in his hands, and it's, yeah, because it's in your hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, yes, the answer is yes, we can see yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. But this is a light source that, f and because it's in the dark, it floats around. It's yeah. great. It's very powerful. Is it in modern dress? Uh, well, it's all in black. Oh, okay, they're, they're wearing black, but it is a it's a modern a modern piece. So they do wear hoodies as well. So, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, that's pretty modern. Then, that's pretty modern. Yeah. yeah, or medieval. Yeah, either way. Yeah, you can make your your own mind up. Yeah, ab absolutely. <laughs> no, very very good. So th that's on the run. When that's gone, and you know your babies fled the nest and what have you, uh, and flown the nest. What's next? We're doing a summer tour, which is around the world in eighty days. Right, uh, and it's in Ret with as you like it. Um, outdoors all summer. Uh, South Hill Park, we're right, going to excellent. again. Uh, in the bank holiday weekend in August. So mm. hopefully we'll get a great buzz there. Um, and yeah, that's we're straight on to that. We're, we're doing that now, actually. The production team yeah. have moved on to that already. Um, and they're both, there's original scores in both. We're writing the music. Around the World in 80 Days is actually a brand new script. With a, with this, we're doing it as like a play with music. Right. Um, Philip is writing a new score. I'm writing the script. So we've, ha we've had a lot of fun in the last few weeks writing yeah. silly lyrics for, for them. And, and, and the point, what we want to do on that is we want to bring the kids that come to see it. Um, feel like they're really involved with it so without making it too panto they'll they'll yeah, be really yeah. involved and 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 we want the parents to enjoy it as well so it's, it should be a great pitching it show. at your your demographic is always a problem isn't it you've got yeah. to get the right people and you've got to write the right things give the right music it, yeah it's a balance yeah it yeah. is it is a balance um and hopefully you know you can only hope you hit hit the right point and if you don't you've got to try and adapt it as you go to, <laughs> to yeah. hit the right point do you have to convince anyone at south hall park each time with each production or do you have the final say um it's ron McAllister, who's the managing director there it's very funny our relationship because I, I pitch an idea and he goes ron i go no come on it'll be great we'll be able to do this and we'll be able to, oh, come standard. on it'll be brilliant that is yeah. pretty standard when you approach anyone yeah I know, when i write a script and everyone goes yeah yeah it's good it's good and you go yeah and <laughs> you know you go, yeah everyone always thinks they can do better yeah, Whatever yeah. you do, somebody who's not creative always thinks that they can have a little tinker, a little fiddle around because they've got a commercial hat on. Yeah, you know? yeah. And also they're, they're in the power position, so they go, oh, actually, uh, might be good if this works. And then, you know, if you use it, they'll go, it's all my idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ron's very good actually. Ron, Ron's very open to ideas, and he's helped us a, a lot. Um, yeah. He's been very open to us coming in as a new company and being like, you know, I know these boys. They've mm. they've been here for a while. They've done productions here, and I, you know, I believe in them, and it's great that he does. And and actually, we've got a very very exciting thing happening there and together, us with Southall Park in February, uh, right. a big community production. And uh, I can't tell, say what okay. it is, but it will be it, the community will be very excited when they see. How many productions? You do, you do try to do half a dozen or so? Yeah, about five or six. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and they go from uh, full-scale pros arch productions for a main house mm -hmm. uh, to small studio pieces in Pitch Black. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which we're doing again at Christmas. We're doing Christmas Carol in, in Pitch Black. Right. But we're setting that in uh, World War Two, and, and Scrooge buys a bomb shelter because he's sick of all of Bob Cratchit going to the bomb shelter every right. time there's an air raid. So if he buys the shelter, then they can carry on working. I love the Black Adder Christmas Carol, yeah. the reverse Christmas Carol. Yeah, yeah, he goes yeah. being a good guy to a bad guy. It's so funny. Very, yeah. very good. Yeah, yeah, it's great. He's uh, he's such an interesting character, Scrooge, oh, and, and, yeah. and can be very, very funny. Um, yeah. I think 
there's not. I don't think there's any wrong way of playing him, but I think it can be a bit dull when they're very, they're very stern and they're. But yeah. Scrooge, you know, he contradicts himself all the time. Well, especially you know when he goes back and sees himself as a boy, and suddenly this sort of you know fearsome old character to the kids go, oh, it's Scrooge because he's always a bit of a, an abanazer about him. Oh my God, it's Scrooge! And then when he sees himself as a boy and realizes his shortcomings, there's a, there's a lot of pathos in there. Yeah. Yeah, and and he, you know, he changes a lot. I actually, when I did it for Lincoln Theatre Rep, I played young Scrooge, mm-hmm. um, and Peter Amory from uh, Emmerdale was our was our Scrooge. He was All fantastic, right. yeah, yeah. Um, and it was very funny for me trying to encompass his the way that Peter was playing it and his character, and then making him young and making him in love with Belle, and mm. and and you know, making him a new character while still being Peter because Peter yeah. stood very hunched and I stand up very straight. So it was. Um, yeah. It was it was hard, but it was good. It, you know, it's it, it's it's good that you can see a progression in that play from child to to adult. It's it's a lovely yeah. story. Yeah, we had a song, Bell of the Ball." There. Bell of the ball, though your heart is breaking. Yeah, it's funny you just saying that. Things come back yeah. flooding into your head. But uh, <laughs> we had uh, Chris Corcoran playing Scrooge for quite a period of time, and then latterly Anton Rogers did it. Ah, it was very good. Yeah, fantastic. Very very good. So, uh, and not surprisingly, that's your, uh, in terms of your favourite things, your favourite book, Christmas Carol. It is, I guess yeah. you'd be so immersed in it, of course. Yeah, it really is. I think it's such a such a fantastic piece of writing. I'm a big, big fan of, mm-hmm. of Charles Dickens. I think he's just, the way he writes is fantastic. Um, and we, we forget what a good book this is, because you've seen it so many times. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th- that, that whole thing, uh, the, you know, the, the, mo- the moral tale of, you know, what was, what is, and what is to be, yeah. possibly. It's great. I mean, it's very, very clever. And it's another one of those stories, uh, like Shakespeare, a lot of Shakespeare's stories, it, it's timeless. Yeah, yeah. People can relate to it now. There's, you see people now that are like that in Canary Wharf. You could go to Canary Wharf and see 12,000 Scrooges a day. Yeah. Um, but, I, always um, think of, I always think of it in Covent Garden uh, before Christmas, when I'm in Covent Garden, and the streets are teeming and heaving with people, yeah. and it's Covent Garden. You know, it yeah, feels yeah. like the air, and the Christmas things, you know, you will see the, you know, the sausages flying out on the balloons, and uh, it's great. Covent Garden always reminds me of Dickensian London. In it's so Dickensian, and it's probably because it hasn't really changed since yeah. a Dickensian time. Um, and it's fantastic. Actually, the uh, someone told me uh, once that they planned to take a motorway right through London and right through Covent Garden, yeah. uh, and this chap bought all the houses on this on one of the main streets in Covent Garden wow. because they were all going... There was this motorway coming, and they were all going really cheap, so he bought all of them. And then they decided not to build the motorway there, and he made massive profit. <laughs> cause, Whichever way. Because he owned the whole street, yeah. Really, yeah. yeah. Brilliant stuff. Okay, we'll chat more in a moment with Jonathan Ashby, artistic director from the London Contemporary Theatre. 27 minutes after three, BBC Radio Berkshire. The Carpenters only yesterday, BBC Radio Berkshire, 25 to 4. Jonathan Ashby, the artistic director of London Contemporary Theatre, uh, is my guest this hour. I've been chatting about the uh, Scottish play at South Hill Park, uh, doing it in the dark. Uh, it's, it's, it's the kind of thing you sort of want to go and see to see what it's like. I remember a, a, um, a restaurant in London, uh, somebody said, oh, it's a restaurant that it's all in the dark, it's in the East End, and yeah. they served you in the dark and you ate in the dark, and it was meant to heighten your taste buds, but, I mean, you couldn't see you at all. Talking to yeah, <laughs> you don't even know if you're on the right table. No, I mean you don't know what's on your plate. That's a start, you know. Yeah, um, I, I did. Hear, I've heard about that, and we we wanted to go and research what we were doing by going there, but we yeah. couldn't find the sufficient. Actually, be, wouldn't that be a funny play to do, to do a play in the dark about the restaurant in yeah. the dark where? people get the tables mixed up or you're having a conversation with someone and you think you're talking to somebody else i mean there are a lot of uh, limitless possibilities yeah. there i think you might have just come up with something there there you yeah. go <laughs> um it would yeah. certainly be a humorous idea wouldn't it where somebody goes through comes back sits at the wrong table yeah you know yeah but it's actually the person they're having an affair with or the wife of the person <laughs> so. yeah i mean they're all sorts of without getting too ray cooney about yeah, well, it you, you could uh, yeah definitely so to some of your favorite things uh, your film, again, um, was Shakespeare. Yeah, Romeo and Juliet, Baz Luhrmann, uh, which is the one commonly known as the one with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio in it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's a fantastic film. Um, I really feel that Shakespeare's such an important part of our heritage, and one of our aims at the company is to get younger audiences listening and, and watching and being involved with Shakespeare, and I think being involved is a, is a massive point of that. Um, one, of, one of the head honchos of a teachers' union this week 
said that, oh, kids find Shakespeare boring. I mean, it's all over the press this week, yeah. all over the media. Uh, kids find it boring. Uh, let's cut out the intro and get to the meat. Well, uh, if you're talking about intros, you're talking about uh, the witches. Yeah. You're talking about, you know, the winter of discontent. Uh, you're talking about some terrific intros. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I mean... If you miss out the intro, you miss out the lead to the story. It's like watching uh, yeah. going to Midsummer Murders halfway through. Yeah, you can't really, you can't really watch any story without the beginning. It's written like that for a reason. And I, ju- I really, really strongly feel that performing Shakespeare is is a great way of of learning it and and being excited about it. I, I remember seeing in school, um, and thinking, oh, Shakespeare, it's so boring. It's And we went around the class and we read different parts at different mm. points and everyone had this sort of voice, oh, God, well, Tina, oh, God, I don't want to do it. So boring and everyone sulks about it. But actually, if you're actively involved with it, it it's really fun and interesting. Yeah. When, I, when I got to Red Roos and we started doing it, I went, oh, Shakespeare, no, no. And then yeah. and then I was like, this 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 geezer's all right, actually. He's, he's quite a cool dude. And Wrote what, some it, of the top stories. Well, there you go, yeah, and... And you know, Kiss Me Kate is Taming of the Shrew. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lion King is Hamlet. Like these stories that we love as kids. Let's cut out the intro and get to the meat. Well, uh, if you're talking about intros, you're talking about uh, the witches. Yeah. You're talking about, you know, the winter of discontent. Uh, you're talking about some terrific. So boring, and everyone sulks about it. But actually, if you're actively involved with it, it's, it's really fun and interesting. Yeah. When, I, when I got to Red Roos and we started doing it, I went, oh, Shakespeare, no, no. But it's actually the person they're having an affair with or the wife of the person. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, they're all sorts of things. Without getting too Ray Cooney about yeah, well, it, you, you could, uh, yeah, definitely. So let's cut out the intro and get to the meat. Well, uh, if you're talking about intros, you're talking about uh, the witches, yeah. you're talking about, you know, the winter of discontent, uh, you're talking about some terrific intros. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I mean... If you miss out the intro, you miss out the lead to the story. It's like watching uh, yeah. going to Midsummer Murders halfway through. Yeah, you can't really, you can't really watch any story without the beginning. It's written like that for a reason. And I, ju- I really, really strongly feel that performing Shakespeare is is a great way of of learning it and and being excited about it. I, I remember seeing in school, um, and thinking oh Shakespeare it's so boring it's and we went around the class and we read different parts at different mm. points and everyone had this sort of voice oh god well Tina oh god I don't want to do it so boring and everyone sulks about it but actually if you're actively involved with it, it it's really fun and interesting yeah. when, I, when I got to Red Roos and we started doing it I went oh Shakespeare no no and then yeah. and then I was like this 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 geese is all right actually he's he's quite a cool dude and Wrote what, some it, of the top stories well there you go yeah and and you know, Kiss Me Kate is Taming of the Shrew. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lion King is Hamlet. Like these stories that we love as kids are actually Shakespeare's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, so yeah. And what's name? Bob Carlton did The Tempest. He yeah. did that uh, rock and roll version of The Tempest. Yeah, he did. Yeah. I haven't seen that actually. But so, I've, I've uh, heard yeah, some some of these things are very good, but they are, as we always say, they're the, the basic stories that yeah. exist, aren't they? Yeah. How he found time to do it all in, in his short life, 52, yeah. uh, I mean, and yeah, how, I mean, uh, I was saying the other day, I mean, allegedly, they now say, oh, he taught in Hampshire for a couple of years. He was captain of his drinking team. Yeah. Uh, he was a spy. Uh, he toured <laughs> in his plays. How did he find time to there's, write the There's so things? many different things as well, saying, did he actually write them? Yeah, I, yeah. I think he did. Um, but he's so knowledgeable about, like, the bays of Portugal, and he never went to Portugal, and the, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's so many places in her, his plays that he writes about. Um, I mean, now but, you could Google them. Yeah, exactly. You know, you could know everything about Portugal now in, in the safety of your own armchair. You'd have exactly. to go there. But then you, you had to Yeah, know. yeah. And, and how many people did he bump into if he didn't go himself that had been to Portugal? Oh, exactly. And and it's Chinese whispers. You know, one person says, oh, I've heard about Portugal, and it's like this, and then it goes on Chinese whispers. But by the time it got to him, yeah. if, if he was writing about it, that, that that's dead accurate. It's so accurate. Yeah. That's something that only really, if you'd seen it, you can describe. But maybe it's his way with words. Who knows? Possibly. And your play, uh, another good one, The History Boys. Love The History Boys. Um, just such a great, great piece of writing. Uh, he basically writes about... Uh, the subject of of education and and sitting in a classroom and the bits that actually as people would be like would find boring and just makes it so interesting and it's such a such a good play and and so interesting and funny and sad and there's great music in it yeah it's a really really fantastic i bet you love another favorite of mine the dead poet society as well yeah yeah 
It's yeah, great. I love that. And uh, well, there's just so many great plays in that sort of genre. Yeah, I, Robin fantastic. Williams is 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 brilliant. Another, another favorite actor of mine. That I realise more and more I like is Dustin Hoffman. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, it's great and always really different. Yeah, always <laughs> you can watch different. a film and be like, it's, oh, it's Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh no, absolutely fantastic. Uh, so, favorite holiday. Uh, boy, down south. You prefer going down south, do you? Yeah, North yeah. and South Carolina. We used to, uh, as a kid, um, we used to go out there and uh, my stepdad's a very keen golfer um, and taught me how to play as well. And my mum and my sister, we always used to go out there and my stepsister and just have these fantastic holidays and it's such a slow pace of life. Um, and my stepdad's a very, very fun person and I think that's one of the main reasons that they were such fun holidays. Um, yeah. We used to play crazy golf and, yeah, they were just great fun. And we've been, like, we've been back six or seven times now uh, throughout and I went back a couple of years ago and, it, you know, I was there first when I was about six years old so it's nice to keep yeah. going back and I've never been out there and not enjoyed it. It's always I've been never fantastic. been there. And oh, yet when I was a little kid there was a song uh, subsequently discovered was written by a guy called Walter Donaldson, and um, which was nothing could be finer than to be in Carolina <laughs> in the morning. And I don't know why I was kid. I thought, oh, this is a magical place. Nothing could be finer. It's, it's a very small kid. You think that's obviously the place to be. Nothing yeah. could be finer. It says yeah. so in the song. Uh, the, <laughs> where I am now is obviously not good. Carolina is obviously the place to be. Why and would you I like? sort of dreamed <laughs> about what Carolina might be like as a little kid. Yeah. It would probably be a letdown if you got oh, there. Total. If you thought it was the best place in the world. Yeah, totally. It is very nice. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, great fun, and and on the uh, the music front, is it, we, we're going to play one of your favourites, but uh, another one you chose. And I I said before you came in, I said, well, this guy's got to be cool. He's chosen Jeff Buckley. Oh, I love Jeff Buckley. Mm. Yeah, um, I think one of the re- main reasons that that people that do love Jeff Buckley love him so much is because he only had that sort of one and a half albums in a way, and yeah. then, and then he died and. And it just makes him sort of, there's no more, there's no, oh, his third album wasn't very good, because yeah. it doesn't exist. So what he did write was fantastic. Um, Much the same with another great singer-songwriter, Nick Drake. Yeah. Um, exactly the same, died very young, left a, a small legacy, uh, but a very hip legacy. Yeah, uh, yeah. and T-Rex are another one, yeah, yeah. a band where you go, oh, I wish they'd done more, but it's great that they didn't, because cause yeah. what we've got is, is so great. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Buckley, yeah, I love... Uh, I play guitar as well. I love playing Jeff Buckley and sitting and relaxing. Except you, you're so laid back after you've listened or played it that you can't really stand up. <laughs> <laughs> so, finally, uh, the band you have chosen. Uh, Coldplay. Yeah, yeah. Big fan of Coldplay. Um, I just think it's really relatable music. I think what they stand for is great. They never swear. They never, they never, they're never controversial. They're always straightforward and great and relaxed. And, and Chris Martin seems such, like such a good guy. And, yeah. and, um, and yeah, the, the music's fantastic. Uh, yeah. Before and, we play yeah. it though, I must say another inspiration bizarre. Who mentioned Jeff Buckley and Coldplay, a very eclectic mix. Uh, Petula Clark, also an inspiration. Yeah. A, an inspiration in, in a different way. Um, I, I was very lucky to work with Petula, uh, for the last four or five years um and just just her professionalism is 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 a great way of that i've learned of, of of drive you know she's she's been doing it for a long time and she's still got the same drive she goes mm. on stage and does 32 songs a night one of which she's sung a million times probably yeah um I, I love downtown mainly for the fact that it was two songs to the end and i was almost about to go to the pub and have a pint <laughs> but um but yeah she's 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 a real inspiration um and i got to tour with her and my dad who i'm very very close to uh, was on those tours as well so they're very very happy times to look back on um and yeah. Petula's so ins- yeah great inspiration and of course she sang the great charlie chaplin song this is my song yeah this is my song Wonderful. Uh, to sing a song written by charlie chaplin yeah great, isn't it? and it's it's lovely in french she sang it in french a lot in her shows and that's beautiful beautiful yeah yeah i'm not sure if it translates to the same thing do you aim to do <laughs> so, uh, songs and shows in other languages would you like to do that oh i don't know i think it would help if i did speak another language ah, <laughs> could be a drawback could be a drawback but, yeah um i've always wanted to do something in russian so i should learn <laughs> well it might take you a while yeah uh jonathan thanks for coming in uh, mm-hmm. and come back uh, and see us again yeah and, and, uh, and catch, yeah. catch Macbeth. Uh, yeah, uh, London Contemporary Theatre, South Hill Park. Uh, what are the dates? Uh, it's the, the remaining dates, Wednesday, 8 o'clock, mm-hmm. Thursday, 5 o'clock and 8 o'clock p.m., of course, Yeah, uh, and Friday, uh, 5 o'clock and 8 o'clock. So, so three days. When does it go days. after that? Where, uh, where? Then it's to Guildford on the 16th and Brilliant. then Brentwood later in the month. Excellent. Good stuff. Jonathan, we'll see you again, no doubt. See you it's 3.45 here at Coldplay. <laughs> 